Let's go take a look okay, at the shower Hi, Callie. Hi, I'm Ed. Good to meet you. What's your name? Callie. No, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, where are we going, Ed? Right in here? Yep. Okay, this is it here. That's okay. It. This is a unique little shower, so, um, yeah, so what do we got going on, Ed? What did, uh, how, how'd you know that it was first starting to fail? What the, the floor back there started to feel spongy when I okay. stepped on a certain place. Mm -hmm. And then I looked down tile and I could see that one was loose. It was, you know, ready to come off of there. Uh huh. So just started pulling them off. They just, you know, came off basically by hand. Okay. And, um, and then, you know, kept going and was uh, horrified to see that yeah you know, it was wet all the way down there oh, yeah yeah so did you pay someone to to do this did you hire somebody or did the house come this way no i i hired somebody a fellow owed me some money okay for work i did for him mm -hmm. so this is what he did okay in trade and i wasn't here when he did it mm -hmm. i was somewhere else and so i don't know exactly what he did or didn't do as far as uh, walls or vapor barriers or okay yeah. Anything, you know, okay. That just um, so it was done, kind of, kind of as a trade and uh, help yes. you out. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was done, I think, about 2013. Probably seven years old. I was seven, eight yeah. years old. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, and then somebody else later did the did the, the tub, tub and, okay. and the floor and all. You know, I had the place kind of remodeled. And so you, you said you do have plenty of the field tile. Um, we don't have any of the trim. Yes. Um, the trim tile, actually, that looks maybe just like a dowel tile, quarter round, almond. So it might be something that we can still get. Um, so so if, if we could save this, is that what you would like to do? If we could save? Yeah, yeah. I would, yeah. Okay, so we'll see what we um, come up with. I'm going to have to... To tear some tiles off and, yeah. and whatnot, so you're okay with that if I tear into it? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Just I can't want, wait to see what's going Yeah, just want to make sure. I don't want to tear it out and you go, oh no, can <laughs> no. you put it back together? <laughs> no. no, please yeah. do. Okay, so we'll get, yeah, we'll get into it, Ed, and um, I might holler at you for some other questions and let you know what's going on, but yeah. we'll, we'll get going on it. Okay, All great. Right. All right, thank okay. you, Isaac. Yep. Okay, so we're going to get Taryn into this. I'm going to start on the shower bench. I can already see uh, there's definitely some stuff going on with the shower bench. So the story behind this install is, is that Ed, the homeowner, had a friend or uh, someone he knew that owed him some money. And so as a trade to, to pay off the debt, he built him a shower. And uh, right off the bat, I can tell there's, there's a lot of things that he... He, he actually probably did okay on some of the tile work, but as far as building a shower, he had no idea. And that's, that's common. That's, that's not unheard of. Um, a lot of people, they get into doing tile and they think they can do a shower and they think it's easy. And um, as you've seen in some of my, my other videos, uh, they can really get in over their head. So if you've never tiled a shower before, uh, I hope you find this video and pause before you start doing a shower and get some help, hire a professional. We actually have coaching plans now on our website for sale at tilecoach.com. If you need help on your shower and you don't know what direction to go, please, please, please uh, sign up for one of those programs or find a local professional in your area who has experience in doing showers. So anyways, I, I see with this bench, there's definitely something going on. It looks like um, some silicone was kind of placed over some of the cracks and it, it just doesn't doesn't look solid so Ed had already tore out the shower pan um, and he wants to see if I can save any of the shower and maybe do a patch but in order to do that I need to investigate a little bit further and see what is underneath it and um, see if we can save the walls because he does have extra field tile and like I said, I think this trim tile looks like maybe just a common dowel tile ceramic. And I mean, if I can save this, I would love to be able to um, save the rest of this and just redo the pan for him. So we're going to get Taryn into this. Um, so let's see here. I'm just going to take a chisel and start um, going from here. Now, now a shower bench is an area that oftentimes 
is not waterproofed correctly. And a lot of people think that, you know, you only need to waterproof a pan. That's definitely not the case. Any horizontal area like this, it's going to hold water and get a lot of water. Um, will definitely need to be waterproofed as well as, you know, at least as good as a shower pan. A lot of these tiles, a lot of these jobs aren't, aren't done real well. Um, the nice thing about the tear outs is that a lot of times they come out easy. But yeah, I already got all of these tiles lifting up. I've never seen this before. Um, it looks like this was waterproofed with uh, like the, the writing is still <laughs> written on there in reverse. Uh, this is actually window flashing it looks like. Uh, maybe some kind of uh, pituthane uh, grace ice and water shield but um, they tried they bonded directly to it. <laughs> Um, that's not a good bonding surface for thin set. You can see it just came right up. So that's something different. I've never seen that. It looks like you tried to do a little slope on the back here. Uh, I'm not sure what that order is. Here's a little deco. Again, this had um, silicone all over it. So yeah, it looks like they tried to build up with thin set or some kind of underlayment here to give it some slope. But yeah, that just came out just like that. Uh, using using window flashing. Maybe this guy was a roofer or something and, and uh, tried to use the same principles as doing a roof. Uh, and you know, I don't know this, we do use bituthane in, in waterproofing. Um, it, it's, it's common for us as tile guys, um, a Schluter, if you're doing an exterior balcony with a Schluter Systems, um, they want you to do basically this. They want a bituthane down on the bottom. Then they want the troba on top of that, which is a drainage mat. But what's different than what he did is we do a mortar bed, a dry pack, which is about an inch and a half and it's reinforced it's got wire in it reinforced mud bed and then we go detra on top of that so you basically have two layers of waterproofing the bituthane is like the bottom layer in case anything happened to get through the detra but um you would never bond tile directly to it that's that's a big no-no so if this was, you know, if, if he would have done this and if he would have laid wire on it without stapling it and then do a dry pack on top of it, this thing probably would have held up. Maybe not though. Um, so yeah, that's, that's at least going to need to be uh, redone. And the thing with waterproofing is when you do this stuff, same with the shower pan, it's not like we could just waterproof up to right here we need to tear this tile off and carry the waterproofing up a good I would say six inches four to six inches around here so this row of tile is going to need to come off if, if we are able to do a repair and this whole face is going to need to come off um, you know we got some some uh, real funky stuff going on here so I, I imagine well, let's see. Let's, these tiles will have to come off anyways because we're coming down. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can get these guys off as well. And I know I'm going to get some comments about using a wood chisel, uh, but these work good for me. I, I'm not a carpenter, so I'm, I don't use this on wood. I just use it on tile. So, um, you know, I know people really, the carpenters, get all up in arms about using a wood chisel 
on the tile, but that's all we use it for. It's, it's for me, to me, it's a tile tool and it works good. So these ones are on here a little bit better. Um, so I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm going to guess that they use some kind of hardy backer down here. Actually, it looks like, uh, I think I'm seeing some Duroc through here. Yeah, so we're down to the Duroc layer right here. So their flashing stopped. Um, their bitchin' thing was right here. And it stopped. So here's what bitchethane is. It's basically a sticky tar. It comes on a roll, it comes on a sheet, it sticks to itself. And they use it on roofs, flashing doors and windows. Uh, we don't ever, like I said, besides um, doing an exterior balcony, we don't ever use it. So they stick that right to the, the Duroc. Well, I don't know if it's Duroc, it's the one with, I think it's Permabase, they call it. It's the one with the little styrofoam balls in it. Oh, it's, it's got the little styrofoam balls. And this is kind of funny because, I don't know if you can tell from the lighting in here, but we have a green uh, LED light in here, and I, it changes colors. <laughs> So we're constantly getting a different color in here, but um, luckily I have a really good lens on this camera. This is a, a Canon EF lens and it's um, L series and it's got a really wide aperture. It's a 2.8 and um, captures a ton of light. So um, this is actually kind of hard to see for me in here, but on the camera it shows up really bright. So yeah, so we've got Permabase. Um, Looks like he just used the bitchethane flashing here. He probably flashed up a little bit. So interesting. He, um, I think I don't think there's going to be any water damage in here because again, I think maybe this guy was a roofer and he used the principles of roofing and using bitchethane to waterproof this bench. And if it, it, the bitchethane looks good, it's all intact. Um, it's just that the, you know, the, the tile was delaminating because tile thin set's not meant to stick directly to this bitch of thing, especially the foil part. But part of the problem is too is that he didn't use the right drain. He just used a floor drain. I don't know if this is a. This is not the correct drain for uh, doing a tiled shower. Um, this drain looks like just a, a regular floor drain. It's not a shower drain. So I don't know how he attempted to tie it in, but that's probably actually where the failure occurred was right there at the drain and it went from there. Yeah, so that's, you can see what, what they did here is they, um, they wrapped their bitchethane up the wall and then put the, the Duroc over it, which again, I, I see where the guy was was thinking and he used some good waterproofing principles with this but um, it, it was just the wrong it's not a tile application and so this again this probably would have worked you know <laughs> it probably would have worked would have been wrong but it would have worked um, if he would have um, used the correct drain and I don't know. No, it's all wrong. <laughs> I'm going to try to, uh, I see where he was going with it, but it was wrong. There's no way to do this correctly. So uh, there's actually an old drain in here. <laughs> it's funny. It looks like they, instead of packing out his trash from the last remodel. So here's what a shower drain is supposed to look like. This is, this is the, the bottom flange. It was tied into his old uh, cast iron. Here's the P-trap, and as you notice, there's three bolts here on the bottom flange of the drain, and that's where your waterproofing, your pan liner goes over, and then you got the assembly that goes on top to clamp it down. There's weep holes here to let any water weep. 
Uh, so the assembly that went on top, there's weep holes so that as water gets onto the pan liner, it drains down through the weep holes and gets in here. As you can see with this drain, this is just a, an old, this is just a regular floor drain. Um, yeah, that's interesting. When they did the demo, they just threw this down into the crawl space. So that was the old original trap, which was probably still working good. The shower probably wasn't leaking before. Maybe it was, but... Yeah, Ed, it, it looks like your guy, you know, tried his best, but he just, you know, he didn't really know what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it happens. You know? uh -huh. I mean, there's not as... there Even back then, what'd you say, six, seven years ago, seven, eight years ago, mm -hmm. there still wasn't that much information, even on YouTube, for people to find, you know, so people were kind of winging it. It looks like maybe he was a roofer or... Uh, Maybe just a handyman who... It's yeah. kind of a handyman, an inventor. Yeah. He had some stuff that he had patented and sold to Cabela's for oh, okay. uh, for mechanical oh, mechanical ducks stuff. that would flap their wings and stuff. Yeah, you know, so so to me, it, like, he had some of the, the principles that were right. Like, he understood waterproofing. He didn't understand how tile works with the waterproofing. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I feel like I could take these same materials uh -huh. and make a shower pan that works. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we have better products and easier to use products and products that are designed specifically for tile. But I mean, he had the some of the right ideas. He just didn't know how to incorporate them in with the tile system and, and a drain system. Uh huh. So that's and the, you, wrong. I heard you say the drain was from yeah, the, it's wrong, wrong drain. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm gonna check out. Um, you know, but the good news is I think we can. You know, the, the the tile that was installed, you know, above the waterproofing seems solid. I, mean, oh, I yeah. think he did a decent job. He's got a good bond, good coverage. You know, a lot of these these failure jobs, I can just pull the tiles right off of the wall. They're not bonded good. Mm -hmm. And I say, man, this thing's going to fall apart. But I think if we get up above the waterproofing, uh, I think this could be salvaged. Oh, that'd be I great. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do my best. I'm going to... This is going to have to come out anyways. I, I want to investigate again and see what's going on here. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so uh, what kind of trees are out here? What kind of... Oh, uh, walnuts. Walnuts. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was thinking uh -huh. either walnuts or almonds or... Yeah. Yeah. So do you take care of any of it or do you just have that? Yeah, I've right? got uh, 20 acres here of walnuts that oh, okay. we planted 10 years ago, I guess. Okay. I had prunes before that. I've, oh, prunes? Yeah. I've lived here 30 odd years now. Okay. Cool. So, how's the how's the business? How's uh? Well, the crop's great. The price is terrible. Oh really? Yeah. Why are the prices? Is oh, the too much tariffs. Supply? Tariffs really. really? Good. Yeah. Because you, you guys would sell to China. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the market. You know, yeah. the international market. Okay. And so India has a hundred percent tariffs now. Really? And you know they grow a lot of walnuts in Chile. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, just like they do prunes. They have a valley there that's pretty much like the Sacramento Valley. Okay. And uh, so they grow the same stuff we do. So international buyers can buy from them and mm -hmm. and not have to pay it, you know, okay. a tariff. So yeah. um, okay. that's just the way it is. Hopefully yeah. that'll change. Yeah. Because the price went to 50 cents a pound last year. And what, it, what's, a, what's a good year? Oh, the best years were maybe 10 years ago, two bucks a pound. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> just the year before last, it was a dollar a pound, which, okay. you know, is okay, yeah. Yeah. not going to go broke. But, Did you uh, get any help, like federal help or anything? or? Oh, some, yeah, they put, you know, yeah. some little dribble in the bank account. <laughs> yeah. 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 They call it good. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's good for their advertising. Yeah. 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 They're like, hey, we help the local growers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love the drive up Highway 70 here where you see all of the what are the trees all along on the other side here? What the, the, the ones, ones in pink blue flowers or peaches? Peaches, okay. And then the regular prunes have a beautiful white flower, so they're okay. blooming uh -huh. right now. Probably the orchard right next door to me is. So. Yeah, a good little lesson on our agriculture here in the Sacramento Valley. Uh, a lot of people don't know how much agriculture is actually grown here in California. I think we, I think we grow like one fifth of all of the rice that's grown in the world is right here in the Sacramento Valley. Um, he was talking about prunes and walnuts and almonds and then of course we got all the vegetables, the tomatoes, the lettuce and strawberries and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, our, I think our, I read a statistic, our, our industry, 
our state, as far as gross revenue of, of farming and agriculture, is is more than double any other state. Like, the next closest one is Iowa because they have their corn, and I think Texas has, you know, they have all the cattle, but um, California is double any of those. Most people don't think about California as agriculture. You think of it more as, um, you know, Hollywood or the beach or whatever, Tahoe. I don't know what you guys think of uh, California when you think California. Probably crazy politics is one of the things. But yeah, agriculture, we have a very diverse state and, um, you know, some really, really cool geographic features, um, ge geological features. So the Sacramento Valley sits in between um, the Sierra Nevada to the east and the coast range to the west. And it's just this real fertile valley and we get all of the, the snow melt and the runoff that comes down the valley. So a lot of water, um, great um, growing climate temperatures, and then good fertile soils in the valleys. So anyways, that's a little, little bit about that. So let's check out this curb. I'll probably pull that off. Using baseboard on the outside of the curb. Um, but let's see. Um, those ones weren't stuck very good, but that's just drywall on the outside of the curb. So there's no waterproofing at all. Uh, wrapping over the curb. Let's see what the top of the curb has on it. So just hardy backer. Um, you can see the screws that screwed the hardy backer in. So there's probably no waterproofing on this curb. How this thing lasted even this long, I have, I have no idea. So yeah, just hardy backer, uh, screwed right to the, oh, so there's his, there's his bitch of thing again. So he wrapped the bitch of thing up and over the curb to the inside. These two by fours are a little soft, but it's not bad. Not too bad. Again, this bitch of thing, I'm really surprised at how, how good of a job it did. You know, I've always had a thought, and leave it in the comment section below if you'd like to see it. But you know the flex seal stuff that you see on commercials all the time and everything? You know, they have like flex seal uh, paste, they have flex seal, um, you know, on a can, they have flex seal um, with the tape, you know, and I was thinking, man, I'll bet I could build a shower pan out of flex seal uh, and make it work and it would probably work well uh, leave it in the comment section below if you'd like to see maybe even just some testing on using flex seal but i think flex seal is better than this flashing this flashing is really thin um yeah we we got it torn out and um good news is is the rest of the walls the ceiling can be saved mm -hmm. uh, we should be able to take out um, the face of the bench, the rest of the curb, and about a foot up from everywhere where we need to do waterproofing. Yeah. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, I really want to help you out, so I'm going to see if um, some of my suppliers can kick in some material to help with cost. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, if you guys want to see other videos, maybe uh, the video that we make doing the repair here, make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications to see all of my videos. Because if you don't, you're not going to see all the videos and you won't want to miss uh, the video that we make of the repair here. So, um, yeah, if we do that, I'm hoping to keep the cost down for you. I'd love Great. to be able to just, you know, do this to help you out. Um, we do a lot of uh, really high-end work where we're doing really intricate stuff. And, and every once in a while, I like to do one of these projects that actually, you know, helps <laughs> out. Just <laughs> fix what's there, you know, because sometimes, sometimes we're tearing out perfectly good stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's good for my business, but also I really like to be able to do these repairs for people. So I'm going to see if maybe uh, flow effects will kick in a drain for us and then, um, you know, maybe a, a pan system to see what we can come up with. So oh, that'd be um, great. I'll look for, um, I have some of these quarter rounds, so 
I'll look for that quarter round and you have plenty of field tile. So next couple days, I'll get you a price on what it would be to do for us to just do a repair uh -huh. and we'll go from there. But well, I, I appreciate you letting us come up and do this. Well, I really appreciate you coming. Yeah. You know, like I said, I've watched hundreds of your videos, it seems like, just because they're so interesting. Yeah. And that, I've never laid it. That's tile. cool. Yeah. I never will. Yeah. And we don't, yeah, again, we get a lot of phone calls for inquiries and stuff and something about your story and, and just the way you presented it and you were, you were nice and respectful. I go, this is a dude that I'd like to help out. So, um, yeah, glad we could make it up there. And well, yeah, I'm really glad you came. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks Thank a lot, you. dude. Yep.